It was night like no other, with rain pouring relentlessly from the heavens. Thunder rumbled ominously in the distance, and flashes of lightning briefly illuminated the world around me. Despite the storm, my friend Jake and I were determined to make the most of our fishing trip. We had heard stories of the legendary catfish that prowled the depths of Blackwater Lake, and we couldn't resist the temptation to try our luck. Armed with raincoats, fishing gear, and an old lantern, we set out in Jake's rickety boat, casting off from the dock into the inky blackness of the water. The rain fell in torrents, drenching us to the bone, but our excitement spurred us on. The boat rocked gently with the rhythm of the rain, and the only sound that punctuated the downpour was the occasional distant rumble of thunder. We were the only ones on the lake, or so we thought. As we drifted further from the shore, I noticed something odd out of the corner of my eye. A dim, flickering light danced in the distance, obscured by the heavy rain. I pointed it out to Jake, and we both strained our eyes to see what it was. It's probably just another boat, Jake said, trying to dismiss the unease in his voice. But as we got closer, it became clear that it was no boat. It was a lantern, suspended in mid-air, bobbing above the water's surface. There were no hands holding it, no visible source of light, just a disembodied lantern glowing eerily in the stormy night. A chill ran down my spine, and I felt a knot of unease in my stomach. This was no ordinary fishing trip, and we were no longer alone on the lake. The lantern led us deeper into the heart of the storm, its pale light beckoning like a siren's call. We followed it, unable to tear our eyes away, and soon we found ourselves in the middle of the lake, surrounded by darkness on all sides. The rain had intensified, and the lantern's glow became the only source of light in the world. As we drifted further into the inky abyss, I became acutely aware of an oppressive silence. The sound of the rain had disappeared, and the only thing I could hear was the rhythmic sloshing of the oars in the water. It was as if we had entered a different realm, a place untouched by the storm. And then, I heard it. A soft, haunting melody that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere all at once. It was a song, a mournful tune that sent shivers down my spine. I turned to Jake, but he too had heard it, his eyes wide with fear. Did you hear that? I asked, my voice trembling. Yeah, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. It's coming from the water. The melody grew louder, the notes weaving together in a haunting refrain. It was as if the very lake itself was singing to us. I leaned over the side of the boat, peering into the water, but there was nothing to be seen, just an impenetrable darkness. We tried to row away to escape the eerie melody, but it followed us, growing louder and more insistent with every stroke of the oars. Panic began to claw at the edges of my mind, and I knew we had to get out of there. As we rowed furiously, the lantern that had led us there suddenly went out, plunging us into total darkness. We were adrift in the middle of the lake, surrounded by an otherworldly silence and the haunting melody it showed all around us. I grabbed the lantern we had brought with us, desperately trying to relight it, but it remained in stupidly dark. It was as if the very air had been snuffed out, leaving us in a void of nothingness. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the melody stopped. The silence that followed was deafening, and we sat in the boat, trembling and disoriented. We had no idea where we were or how to get back to shore. With great effort, I managed to light our lantern once more, and its feeble glow revealed a sight that sent a jolt of terror through my heart. The lake around us was teeming with shadows, murky figures lurking just beneath the surface. They swirled and darted, their eyes gleaming with malevolence. I could see Jake's face pale in the lantern's light, as he too saw the creatures that surrounded us. Without a word, we both began to row with all our might, desperate to escape the nightmarish lake and the haunting melody that had ensnared us. But the shadows beneath the water followed us, their movements growing more frenzied and aggressive. I could feel their cold, clammy hands brushing against the sides of the boat, trying to pull us under. We rowed on, our strength waning, the lantern flickering ominously. Just when it seemed like we could row no more, 
The first rays of dawn broke through the clouds, casting a feeble light on the lake. With a final burst of effort, we reached the shore, collapsing onto the muddy bank, gasping for breath. The shadows in the water retreated, vanishing into the depths. The rain had stopped and the storm had passed, leaving us shaken and terrified. We never spoke of that night again, and we never returned to Blackwater Lake. The memory of the haunting melody and the lurking shadows still haunts my dreams. A reminder that there are things in this world that should never be disturbed.